from downtown Scranton, this is Northeast Current. WQPX invites you to join us as we explore public affairs, current events, and arts and culture in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. Now let's meet today's guests on Northeast Current. Welcome to Northeast Current. My name is Gabrielle Alberigi. I'm a senior broadcast journalism student at Penn State, and I'm interning in the summer with PennDOT. We're here at Wyoming Area Secondary Center um, outside the building with Andrea from AAA Mid-Atlantic. Um, she's here to tell us a little bit about uh, back to school safety because school is starting soon. Um, there's going to be a lot of buses, a lot of cars on the road, a lot more travel. So. Um, with buses, there's a lot of things that are going on with that. Can you tell me some safety tips with buses? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, as far as bus safety goes, we want to remember as a student riding on a bus just to follow your basic rules. You know, remain seated the whole time facing forward. You want to keep your hands, um, pretty much all of your body parts inside of the bus at all times. Um, pretty much respect yourself and others. Um, don't yell, make any loud noises that could distract the driver. You want to keep the aisles clear. Uh, make sure your book bag or your purse or whatever you may have is either on the seat next to you or under your seat. Um, and just basically follow those rules. If there is um, a drill or an evacuation, you want to remain calm. Um, follow the instructions of your bus driver and um, just go out the way that they tell you to. Right. Now, is there any, how far away, I don't know if there's an exact number, or should you keep a certain amount of distance away from the bus when you're waiting for it to pull up? Um, I think as a general rule, um, they call the danger zone 10 feet all around the bus. That's because um, children can't necessarily see and other people can't see you. So, um, as I, I like to keep as much distance as possible. When in doubt, I always stop. Um, even if they're, if they're stopped and their um, you know, stop sign isn't up or their lights aren't flashing, I would still stop. Um, it's the law. So um, mm -hmm. just as a general rule, when in doubt, you want to stop and make sure um, that you're safe and you're keeping the kids safe too. Right, and it's always good to be alert and be aware. And if you're on the bus, always listen to the bus driver. Always, yes. yeah. And when you're outside the bus, just make sure that you're, even if you're stopped, just make sure you're aware of your surroundings and you're aware of the children because they don't really have that sense of danger or the sense of, um, you know, trouble like adults do. So you always want to keep a watch out for them. Right, right. And also, we can't forget about college kids. College kids, right. college kids are going back to school too. They are. So, <laughs> and they're traveling on the road, packing up their car. What do you have yes. for them? So that's an exciting time. You're getting ready for college. Um, you just want to remember not to overpack your car. Um, kind of distribute your weight evenly um, in the car. It helps for a smoother ride. And also, if there is an accident, um, when you're not, when the weight's not evenly distributed, uh, you can cause a rollover e more easily. Um, you also want to make sure that you're not packing up too high in the back so that you can still see out of your rear view mirror just for safety reasons. Of course, um, don't pack a car that's too heavy because a heavier car takes longer to stop. Um, and then if you're going on a long trip, you want to make sure you have your essentials, your water, your snacks. Um, stop often so you don't get tired. Um, and then, you know, you just pack your essentials and you can always mail the rest later. Mm -hmm. That's good to know, especially for me. I'm going back to school in two yeah, weeks. So definitely. <laughs> anything helps. So thank you. For, thank thank you. you for joining us here. Thank you very much. We're standing here with Vito Qualia. He's the principal of Wyoming Area Secondary Center. Thank you for coming Thanks on for the show with us. us. Thank you. I want to talk about uh, students back to school. There's going to be a lot of students coming in to the building, a lot of parents dropping off their kids. Um, can you outline the safety precautions that you've taken out up front when pa parents are dropping off their kids? Sure. Uh, what we try to do at the front of our building, we try to maintain a certain area that's the parent drop off, and we also utilize uh, our school resource officer and other school personnel at the front of the building, especially at this, the beginning of the year to get the, the parents and the kids into the routine. And basically there's a certain area that's a crosswalk where traffic will stop and the students are allowed if they're dropped off on the other side of the street to come across and, and traffic has to stop. But also the whole lane in front of the school, is there's no parking there so parents can actually drop off there and then move up to continue on the road. So we really try to stay 
out there and be very vigilant at the beginning of the year and hopefully the routine takes care of itself as the school, go, school year goes on. And the same thing at the, uh, at the end of the school day at the exit, we have school personnel at the back parking lot because our student drivers leave there and we make sure that there's supervision there that they could see that there's school personnel there just to maintain you know, a safe speed when they're leaving the school. Mm, and I know for a fact that it does get a little crowded because I went here, but I mean, I know the things that you have in place, they do seem to be working, which is good. Well, it, it, it's a, the challenge we have is we're a neighborhood school, so we're right in, in the middle of a neighborhood. We're not off at a campus like some schools are, so we really have to understand and be respectful of our neighbors and try to make sure that not just our students are being safe, but that they're driving and, and the activity that is leaving the building is also safe for our neighbors. Right, and you also bring up the fact that we are in the middle of a neighborhood a community. Um, kids are walking to and from school. Do you have any safe tips um, for kids walking to and from school? Sure, we do have several walkers, uh, kids that, that walk from West Pittston and, and Exeter, and we try to make sure that you know the kids are walking down the main roads, you know, not cutting through alleys and yards and things like that, and also walking with friends. So they you know, and parents could anticipate you know the time that they would get home, who they're walking with, things like that. So if anything should happen, if someone's late, you know they they have a, a safety net of who they can check with and see if someone stayed after school or you know who they'd be coming or, or going to school with. Right, and with kids walking, um, you know, Pokemon Go, cell phones, everyone's always in their phone. Mm -hmm. um, so are you trying to cut down on texting while walking? Well, it's actually something on this summer, I think the, the big phenomenon with Pokemon Go has kind of taken the whole area by storm. And if you drive around or, or walk around, you can see people just fixated on their phones, almost like little zombies, you know, and you're worried that they're going to walk out into traffic or into a wall or something. So that's definitely something we're going to talk to them the first day of school about that. I mean, our policy here in the school is no cell phone use unless it's, um, you know, approved by the teacher in the classroom or something going on. So they really shouldn't be texting or on their phone at all. But also just that idea that if they've been spending the last two months in the summer looking for, you know, Pikachu or something, that they might have that, you know, they're, they're going to break them of that habit a little bit. And again, I could, you know, you're talking about steps and things like that. You don't want someone looking at their phone and not paying attention and getting hurt. Right. Now a little bit about what you tell the kids on the first day of school. I know you have meetings, mm -hmm. I've sat through those meetings with mm -hmm. the students. Um, what do you tell them about safety? Just um, how do you break it down for them? Well, basically we have um, grade level meetings. We break it down with the seventh and eighth grade, ninth and 10th, 11th and 12th. And we just, depending on the, the audience that we're talking to, if it's the newer kids, the younger kids, we kind of take them through the routines a little bit more basically through the fundamentals with the older students. Naturally, we just kind of give them a, a refresher of the, the rules that we've had. But we, we go through everything from, you know, with the, you know, lunch, like how to walk through the lunch line, you know, the different areas of the building, what staircases to use, things like that. And with the older students, naturally, we get into the driving issues, you know, making uh, good choices when you, you know, different, you know, you want to get involved with uh, drugs and alcohol, things like that. So that, that kind of overall umbrella of getting good choices in their head from the early days of school. So it's not just about what they're doing here in school, but also the choices they make when they're out in the community or at home. Right, that's also that's always good. I know I, I'll, whatever you said at that meeting would always stick with me throughout the year. It would set the tone mm -hmm. to make me have a well, good year. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm glad we had the influence <laughs> well, that's on good. You. Yeah, yep, no, yep. it really does influence. Thank you. Um, do you have any other safety precautions that you do in the school to ensure safety, even like with um, bullying stuff like that? Well, yes. I mean, bullying it, naturally it's a very prevalent thing. It's it's gone on in society forever, but I think the whole uh, accessibility to the internet and anonymous uh, ways to bully has really you know, taking a forefront lately. So we try to make sure that there's a safety net so the students know there's someone they can talk to if they are a victim of something like that. And we also talk to our, our students and even the older students to kind of look out for the younger students and if they sense something's going on that they can be there for them. Because sometimes, you know, a student would, would talk to another age peer rather than going to an adult sometimes. But we do make sure that through their counselors or teachers and things like that, that we set up that network. I mean, it's one of those things where it's, it's going to go on. You can never really eradicate it totally, but you want to make sure that you have steps in place where if something does happen, that you can deal with it and make sure you come to a positive outcome. Right, right. And one last final mm -hmm. question. Um, any tips before uh, the first day of school? I would just say uh, just be organized and prepared for, for everything so for our student drivers to make sure that the first days of school are, it, the traffic does get congested so leave a little bit earlier or even you know the younger kids and make sure that they have everything they need you know they're packed early and they don't forget anything at home because naturally first day of school no matter where you are elementary school high school or college you're, there's a lot of nerves and you know you're kind of disjointed a little bit but just being prepared and organized and I think that gets you into the routine a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Thank right. you very much. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you, Gab. I'm standing here with Wyoming Area Police Officer Chris Alberigi, who is also my uncle. 
Uh, he's here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so uh, the first thing I want to ask you about is what do you do here at Wyoming Area to monitor the traffic, control the traffic, make sure kids aren't going crazy in the parking lots or up front? Well, basically our job as the school police is every morning when the students and staff come in, uh, we position ourselves in the uh, parking lot of the Wyoming Area Secondary Center. And uh, with the patrol car, we're in the lot, patrolling the lots, uh, making sure everyone's driving safe through the lots. Uh, every morning and also we patrol the front of the school we walk um, on the sidewalks and, ar and around the building to patrol the school on a daily basis. Mm, do you have anything in the parking lots? You have sp I know you have speed bumps. Sometimes. Yes we do. We added speed bumps a few years ago um, so they'll be in this year again for added safety in the parking lot uh, to slow the students down in the parking lot. Mm, I definitely think that helps because I know I don't want to admit it but sometimes I would think about going a little too fast but I know the speed yeah, the bumps speed, would be the there. speed bumps definitely help in and the parking lot. I know that your lot. presence there helped me uh, drive slower through the yes, area. <laughs> yes, we do. We're out there every morning. Yes, yes so we are. That's good. It's definitely a deterrent. So what else do you do? Do you um, make sure kids wearing, are wearing their seatbelts throughout the year? Yes, we do. Uh, throughout the school year, we have some safety, uh, safety uh, seatbelt checks. Um, and Exeter Burrell uh, is up here a few times with us, and we're making sure that the, uh, the kids and the staff is wearing their uh, Seat belts, mm -hmm. and if they're not, uh, we give them a uh, a warning, just tell them it's the law, and they have to buckle up, even though they're in on school property in the in the lot, that they have to buckle up. Right. Do you notice a lot of kids not wearing their seatbelt when you drive when you do the checks? Uh, throughout the the last couple of years, the the few years that I've been, been we've been doing the checks like that, I see more and more kids are starting to wear their seat belts now mm -hmm. than they did. Uh, when I started here, which was nine years ago. That's good. That's very good. And what about cell phones? Um, do you notice a lot of kids on their cell phones driving through the area? Uh, not too much as we did. Uh, a few years ago, we, you know, cell phones, we remind them that there is no uh, texting and using their cell phone. Uh, again, on school property, uh, we remind them of that. And uh, we do hand out flyers and pamphlets throughout the school year to, you know, for safety uh, with that, that they shouldn't be using their cell phone while they're in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. That's very good. I know, definitely know that when I see the presence, your presence out there, the cars, I slow down and doing, you're doing a good job with slowing down the area. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Okay. Thank you. I'm standing here now with Mike Kuba. He's the captain of Exeter Borough Police. Yes. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Um, so my question's for you. Uh, I know we're standing outside of the school. Um, what is the speed limit? outside of a school zone? Speed limit in the school zones will be 15 miles per hour. We have officers here from the borough and a school officer at the beginning of the day and at dismissal to monitor the speed of the people in the school zones. That's good, that's good. Do you notice the pres uh, when you're here, do cars usually follow the speed limit? Yes, they're, they're pretty good at staying with it. I mean, we are in a heavy residential area and there's a lot of traffic and congestion, but we, we sit here and make sure that, they, that they're doing the speeds. Mm, well, that's good. I know I definitely slow down. I mean, I always go the speed limit, but I definitely, I'm more aware of it when I see a police officer. You so have to be. Good. There's just more of congestion in the crowded area. Especially here. once in the beginning and the ends of school days. Yes. yes. Um, I know that there's also a lot of buses on the road. Um, do you, what are the laws when it comes to stopping for buses? Uh, buses will turn on their yellow lights first before they come to a stop. Once they come to a complete stop, they'll turn on their red lights and put the arm out and the stop sign. And if you see a bus with the red lights on, you have to stop until the lights go off and you're, you're clear to go by them. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. They're very good to know. Um, also, there's crosswalks. Do people have to cross always in the crosswalks or only sometimes or is it always? It's always. You should always cross in the crosswalk. Actually, not being in the crosswalk is called jaywalking and there is a violation for that and there's a fine for that if you're stopped. Mm -hmm. Now, put, uh, if you're driving, do you have, to, you have to yield to the crosswalks, correct? You have to stop and if there's a pedestrian already in the crosswalk crossing. Here's something that some people might be confused about. Do uh, buses, when, it come, when they come to railroad tracks, do they have to stop? School buses, whether they have any students on them or if they're empty, are required to stop at all railroad crossings. Okay. Whether they're a signaled crossing or not, they will stop, turn their four ways on, open their door, listen for a train, and when they see that they're clear, they can proceed. Mm -hmm. And this area has a lot of train tracks, I know. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, any other tips, any other driving tips for when people are driving through school areas? You have to realize that school's going to start soon, and, and you should be doing the speed limit anyway, but you have to be more alert for the little kids crossing where there's no crossing guard and where buses may be stopping that you don't expect for a bus to stop, but that's where it stops. Right, and all those safety tips ensure that people get to and from where they're going safe and sound and make sure all the kids get to and from school. Exactly. Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you.
I'd like to thank all of our guests who appeared on the show today. Thank you for all the wonderful safety tips, all the helpful safety tips that we've learned. This is my last show on Northeast Current for me hosting as I'm going back to Penn State for my last year there. If you have any questions about any safety tips, you could contact the Penn Dot Press Office at 963-4044 or you could email us at jamay at pa.gov.